Now, you know, um, they always say that when you touch a painful spot, there must be a reaction. Or let's just go the physics way, okay? They say that every action has a reaction. That is the law of inertia. Now, you see, the day we saw Uru Kenyatta coming out and having that rally with Kalozo Musioka, it is like Uru Kenyatta touched, <laughs> you know, a very hot metal, such that this metal is beginning to burn him. And I'm talking about what the government is now coming out with in tackling how Uru Kenyatta came out, what he said, and the future that he's supposed to hold. It's like they read the entire aspect of Uru Kenyatta coming on board, going to campaigns with Kalozo Musioka, and the government tried to portray a picture of what Uru Kenyatta is going to do in the next few years. And this was kind of a very, very appropriate signal. Now, I'm saying that because today, you know, I had something that Rigadi Yashago said, and I wanted to listen to it very keenly, and then we proceed, because it is forming the basis of this analysis. We will be shocked how two billion US dollars was taken from the central bank and put in a private bank that is responsible for the situation we are in, the weakening of the shilling. Now, if you listen to Rigadi Gashagwa, you know, this is the language they have always been speaking. This is their tea and bread. And there is a video we did when we were talking about, um, you know, why is it that Ruto's government or Ruto's regime is full of scapegoating? And, and, and at the same time, they are looking for somebody whom they can blame. You know, they want to have all their blames put on one person. That is their trait. And it is going to be very difficult for them to, you know, avoid it in the long run. Let's just uh, speak of, uh, you know, an instance where the entire first term, we will still, <laughs> we are still going to, to hear this. Every morning we wake up, this is going to be the order of the day. So scapegoating is part and parcel of them. And Rikati Kashago Leo uh, took it a notch higher. And in the political interpretation, this is very, very much direct. You know, he, he was saying that um, it is time they need to revisit how the economy was run by Uru Kenyatta during his time. And we know what they did. And we had said, let bygones be bygones. But there's a good discussion. We are going to have a good discussion. We are putting the figures into place. Who took what and where? So that the people of Kenya can know why we are in this shit and this mess. To be fair to everybody, how do people expect a government to fix a 10-year mess in one year? Okay, he was saying that there are some cases that they just, you know, considered to, you know, they, they had mercy. And they were very specific. They had mercy on Uru Kenyatta. And he went ahead and revealed that at one time, a withdrawal was made which was very abnormal. A withdrawal of almost uh, 3 billion. And so this was supposed to be a case which was being followed and uh, being in the radar of the independent institu institutions. And so they just left it because they did not want to uh, grab shoulders with him. And now it is appearing that, you know, they are rethinking about it. They, they want to actually resurface it. And once it is resurfaced, you know, it's going to take one dimension, which is very key, the political dimension. So when you have the political dimension underpinning it, very many things will happen. And for me, my understanding on this is that there is a warning which is being sent to Uru Kenyatta. So they are telling him, okay, we saw how you came um, and, and showcased to us what you are made of or what you have refurbished yourself ever since you went for, you know, the retirement. We saw what you can be capable of doing. And, you know, it is kind of a warning that they were sending. Because when you look at the same, same statement, is what Kimani Ishungo was saying the moment we had had Kalonzo and Uru Kenyatta completing their rally successfully in Mwingi. At the same time, you look at what Moses Kuria said. You remember the day we did the analysis of Uru and Kalonzo? I told you that Moses Kuria reacted swiftly in trying to bring us how Uru Kenyatta messed the economy, and it is their time. Uh, they are trying to fix 
the Uhuru's messes. So the blame game, the blame game scapegoating is part and parcel of them. But strategically, you look at how Rigadi Gashagwa spoke, this is actually a warning. And this is a warning to make Uhuru Kenyatta go back to his silence <laughs> mode, okay? You know, go back to his hiding. And these people are very serious. These guys are very serious. You, you know, if they want to politically wish hunt you, they can do it perfectly well. And William Bruto is fearing nothing. When he has Rigadi backing him, backing every move in as far as political witch hunting is concerned, you know, they can do anything. And if you are very keen, that is why you are listening to Uru Kenyatta saying, you know, I've been threatened very many times. You know, they have, they have, they have told me a very many ugly and very many nasty nasty things, but I've been silent, have resorted to remain silent and not to say a thing. So when, when, when they were actually seeing that this man is coming back and because Kenyans have been yearning for him, you know, if we leave him, he's going to get a ground to resurface completely well. So the only option, the only way to kind of try to tame him is to send a warning. And this warning is coming based on his previous, you know, a governance what was happening in his regime. You know, Uru Kenyatta has a lot of people who are relying on his silence. You talk of the governors who are very unscrupulous by that time. And even you look at those who are in opposition who have been just uh, spared under the political courtesy that we are having in place, okay? You know, if they try, if, if they start to go after Uru Kenyatta and after Ray Lodinga, you know, we, it, it's not going to be peaceful. It's going to be chaotic and it's going to be messy. So the only option is for Uru Kenyatta to go back to his default setting that he had since he went for retirement. He remained silent and he doesn't come up with robust aspects of him showing the government that, you know, I am coming back and be ready for me. So what, what I was really getting out of Rigadi's statement is a well-fashioned machine. So a well-fashioned machine to tackle the resurfacing of Uru Kenyatta. And you look at all the other lieutenants, you look at Kimani Shungwa saying the same, same language, speaking the same, same language. In fact, they are trying to say that if Uru Kenyatta is now coming back, you know, we need to even take him to a debate. We need to interview him and ask him serious questions. You, you see the direct, the trajectory they are taking. It is all about scapegoating. They want somebody that they can put their blame on. And for Uru's case, they will be trying to put the blame at the same time, trying to be horn him politically because he knows exactly what he can do. But I think at the end of the day, you know, Uru Kenyatta will still triumph because the power of the people is what is now controlling him. You know, like he is saying, should I come? Should I not? The people will be saying, come, we really need you. Okay. So for this case, we are just a matter of time in our analysis, a matter of time in our up to speed with what is happening. And perhaps we will know if Mbivu Nambichi, has kept voting, will overweigh the political weight that Uru Kenyatta can dispense when he teams up with Kalozo Musioka, Railo Dinga, and set a new force for 2027. What do you think, ladies and gentlemen? Let's meet next. Have a great time.